All right, hi lovely. So I'm doing all sorts of goodies for you today. I'm getting you all sorts of videos. So we're gonna go ahead and unbox last month's out, or yeah, out crate. So again, I don't remember what the theme was and let's see if I can find my knife that slid in this chair. As you can see, I have a new chair um, because uh, his Rob's grandparents um, are getting rid of their house. So we got some of their chairs and stuff. So this month's owl crate or last month's owl crate was whimsical beasts. So we're going to set that aside because that's our little cheat sheet, but we don't want to look at that yet. <gasps> Yay! I get another Harry Potter hat. I mean, it's not exactly Harry Potter, but it's Harry Potter because it says Accio Books. So it's, and it's purple, which is one of my favorite colors. And purple happens to be one of my wedding colors, purple and silver. So we're just going to stick that on my head so I don't lose it. Because that other one, I have no idea where I put it and it's somewhere. And I get an umbrella. <gasps> that is cool. Although also, by the way, this has unicorns on it, which makes it awesome. So we have an umbrella. I'm not going to open it. Um, but it has Cerberus on it. It's got sea monsters, mermaids. Uh, let's see. We got a unicorn. We got a, a centaur. Uh, it's also Harry Potter themed. So it's actually, it's actually fluffy that's on here, not Cerberus. Because then we have Buckbeak. We have unicorns. We have Hagrid's pumpkin patch and Hagrid's hut. Uh, we have the centaurs carrying off Dolores Jane Umbridge there, if you can see. She's uh, right there. So we have the mermaids and the grindelows. Um, we have, I'm going to assume this is supposed to be Grop down here. Um, we have a stag. We have the Whomping Willow. So all sorts of awesome, awesome things. And we even have Dobby up here with a sock. So there's that and they're all on this as well that is so awesome now like I need another umbrella I bought myself one uh, a few months ago from my work but I like it <gasps> oh this one I have to take into work with me just to make my friend jealous <laughs> if I'm right about who it is if I'm right so this is a beautiful keychain um, and I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be, um, all right, that's too glare, too glarified. Okay. There we go. Maybe, uh, trying to, trying to show you No. Okay. So I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be Haku from, um, Spirited Away which is one of my favorite Miyazaki films. And it's one of my friend's favorite Miyazaki films. And we both absolutely and utterly adore Haku. Uh, we have Pixie Dust Crystal Soap. Um, so it's with coconut oil, olive oil, palm kernel, soybean oil, castor oil, all sorts of oil. Because, you know, you got to make soap. <clears throat> we have... Um, our Alcrate exclusive pins of which I wore January's yesterday. I will post, I was thinking of posting a pic on Instagram, so maybe you'll see it. Um, but this one for this month is we are now officially part of the Phoenix Rider Club. So we have a Phoenix pin now. I'm so excited. This is so cute. It's just, oh, it's a little like graphic novel. That's so cute. So this is called the Tea Dragon Society. Oh, and it's by Katie O'Neill. So we have just little cutesies, little cutesies. So it says, um, from the author of the award-winning Princess, Princess, Ever After comes the Tea Dragon Society, a charming fairy tale about Greta, an adventurous blacksmith apprentice, and the people she meets as she becomes entwined in the enchanting world of tea dragons. 
After discovering a lost tea dragon in the marketplace, Greta learns about the dying art form of tea dragon caretaking from the kind tea shop owners, uh, Ezekiel and Eric. As she befriends them in their shy ward, Minette, Greta sees how the craft enriches their lives and eventually her own. Aww. And also, I absolutely love the fact that it's all in color. Like, that is freaking awesome. I can't, I can't wait to read it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. Oh, the artwork is beautiful. Oh, it's so cute. I'm probably going to read that today. <gasps> oh. Oh. So. Oh. So coincidentally, my job got an advanced copy of this book. So the advanced copy is actually sitting out in my living room, the paperback version. I have not read it yet. So, because now I have this, I'm probably going to go give it back to work so somebody else can go enjoy it. Because now I have an exclusive edition of it. But this is Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Preto. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's got purple on the sides, which is making me very, very happy. Oh, I am so in love right now. Oh, I'm just like, I'm in awe right now. I'm, it's so pretty. Oh, so we get this cute little thing that says, sometimes the title of queen is given, sometimes it must be taken. And it says that on both sides with the little feather like ornament type of thing I like it we have a postcard map with her writing on the back so it says dear reader I started writing crown of feathers during a low point in my life isn't this always how the story goes I had experienced a lot of failures consecutively and I needed to reconnect with my love of writing. I started revisiting some of my all-time favorite reads, like Tamora Pierce's Tortle Books. <gasps> I'm an author after my own heart. <gasps> I love Tortle Books. They were one of my favorites. Protector of the Small was actually my first quartet that I read, even though it's technically like the third yeah, the third quartet um, in, like, the span of everything. And then I read Elena the Lioness Quartet. And then the Wild Magic, the the one about, 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 um, oh, why can't I think of her name? But, oh, I read, actually, no, that's a lie. The first ones I read were actually uh, the duology about, Elena the Lioness's daughter. So that was the Trickster's Choice and Trickster's Queen. Those were actually the first introduction to Tortle I read. Then it was the Protector of the Small Quartet. So I kind of like did it a little bit backwards. And uh, I, anyway, totally went off on a tangent there. But anyway, an author after my own heart. I love the Tortle books. Um, so, which had shaped me as a reader and a writer, and I knew I wanted to recreate the feeling I had when I lost myself in those kinds of worlds. It was during that time that Crown of Feather really took shape, and it's easy to see how hope and perseverance became central themes to this book, as well as the influence of Tortle in my main character, uh, Veronica. She goes through so much, but never loses sight of who she is and what she wants. She is inherently unflappable unflappably good just like Tamara Pierce's heroines before her I hope with all my heart that crown of feathers becomes a beloved favorite for you that you can lose yourself in its pages the way I lost myself in the books that inspired it Nikki that's giving so much I have like literal chills from reading that and the fact that she just loves turtle like I do 
Like, that is amazing. And, like, I tried to meet Tamora Pierce several years ago, but because, she, um, uh, there's a yearly, um, an annual book, uh, fair type of thing that happens, it's not happening this year because the founder died last year, so they canceled it this year so that everybody can have their bereavement period and whatnot because she, uh, it was, like, back in October that she died. Um... But they always have very well-known authors that come through along with teen authors in the area and, um, and then some, like, new debut authors. So that was how I met, um, Jeff Zentner, who had published his debut novel, and that came a couple years ago in one of the Owlcrate books, and I read it, and then I got to meet him, and he gave me a hug, and he was so awesome, and I really wish I could meet him again. Um, I met Lori House Anderson, uh, who wrote Speak and a whole bunch of other novels, but Speak was, uh, the first one I ever read of hers. Um, but anyway, Tamora Pierce was there one year, Ellen Hopkins, so many big name people, but because of that and everybody wanting their signatures to meet them, all of that, I didn't get a chance to do that. So... Anyway, went off on a tangent again. It's a crown of feathers. It's so pretty. Like I said, it's purple. Oh, it's even purple here. It's just, it's so pretty. I am in heaven right now. I am literally in book heaven. So it says, I had a sister once. In a world ruled by fierce warrior queens, a grand empire was built upon the backs of phoenix riders, legendary warriors who soared through the sky on wings of fire until a war between two sisters ripped it all apart. I promised her the throne would not come between us. Sixteen years later, Veronica and Veronica is a war orphan who dreams of becoming a phoenix rider like the heroes of old. After a shocking betrayal from her controlling sister, Veronica strikes out alone to find the writers, even if it means disguising herself as a boy to join their ranks. That is sounding very Elena the Lioness. I like it. But is it, it is a fact of life that one must kill or be killed, rule or be ruled. Just as Veronica feels like she belongs, her sister turns up and reveals a tangled web of lies between them that will change everything. Oh, and meanwhile, the new empire has learned of the rider's return and intends to destroy them once and for all. Sometimes the title of queen is given, sometimes it must be taken. Crown of Feathers is an epic fantasy about love's incredible power to save or to destroy. Interspersed throughout its story of is the story of Avalkara Ashfire, the last rider queen, who would rather see her empire burn than to have it fall into her sister's hands. Wow. Just wow. And on the back here it says, I am the I am a daughter of death. From the ashes I rose like a phoenix from the pyre. It's just Oh, this cover is giving me chills. It's like this beautiful watercolor painting of a phoenix rider. And it's just oh, okay. Okay, and let me just make sure that there's definitely nothing else in here. Okay. So, um, we have this, um, so this is the cover differences because we have our exclusive. So, this is the original one here. So, it's not as watercolored, um, Actually, if you give me one quick second, I will pause and I will go grab it and I can show you an actual side by side. All right. So like I said, I got in the advanced readers copy. So here it is in paperback. Not as beautiful as this one. So here side by side, you can actually see the differences. So for this one, it's not as like water colored. Um, it still has it. And the back isn't as pretty because it's got other stuff on it because it's an advanced copy. But, so, the original cover has, like, a great background. The phoenix is much more, like, 
red and gold and like phoenix color that you would think. Well, our cover has a darker background. It's a dark purple and our phoenix is like purple and like a red and orange and just beautiful. I love both covers. I definitely love ours better. The Outcrate exclusive. Um, the writing on this one is uh, silver as opposed to the gold on here. Oh, I'm just, oh, I'm so thoroughly like in love with this so so much and it's signed so we got a signed copy here as well so there's that alrighty so now we'll actually read our little cheat sheet thingy here so it says whimsical beast spoiler warning don't don't lose your keys 